Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's Thursday Reflection. This is Ross McKinnon speaking. With the easing of restrictions, we are now allowed to go out and visit our favourite coffee shops. When I was growing up in country Victoria after World War II, we didn't drink coffee. It wasn't available. It wasn't the British thing to do. Tea was the thing. And only American film stars drank coffee. But with the influx of Italians and Greeks after the war, things changed. The Italians introduced us to cappuccinos and the Greeks introduced us to Greek coffee, tiny cups of strong, black, thick coffee. And we haven't looked back. Melbourne is now very much a coffee city. Coffee shops are everywhere and the coffee options available are seemingly never ending. The worst job you can have at work in Melbourne is to go and get the coffee for your workmates. Every person will have a different order. And woe betide if you mix up the hot latte with almond milk and the skinny soy flat white with vanilla flavouring. And I expect we all have coffee stories to tell. And here are a few of mine. When my wife and I first went to Britain in 2008, we looked for a coffee shop in London like the ones that are everywhere in Melbourne, but could only find Starbucks. And when I asked for a flat white, I received a blank stare in return, and we knew that London was not a coffee place. However, five years later, we were back in London, we flew into Heathrow and took the express train to Paddington Station. And there we found a, profit, a proper coffee shop, which offered many options, including flat white. Things had improved. And when we visited Cartagena in Col Colombia, it was a fiercely hot day and we were desperate to find a cool spot and a cup of coffee. And to our great relief, we found a coffee shop which was not only air-conditioned but also sold cups of superb Colombian coffee. In the, Uni the United States is known for having terrible coffee and when we were in the States we had lunch one day at a cafe in Maine and we asked if they served coffee and the waitress, realising we were Australian, gave us a grin and said, yes, we do, but only American coffee. And did you know there is a coffee option called an Audrey? When cousin Jim and his wife Audrey moved to Sale in Gippsland, they checked out the coffee shops there looking for one which served a hot cappuccino. And they found one and became regulars there. And when Audrey died, the coffee shop owners named a hot cappuccino an Audrey. When my wife and I were working, we, we adopted the motto, New Year, New Mug. And each new year, we would make a special expedition to the shops to buy a new coffee mug each. And in retirement, we are missing that annual ritual. And I guess by now you are probably wondering what all this has to do with our faith. Well, I would suggest three things. First, coffee is part of creation and is therefore a gift from God, the creator. And whenever we have a cup of coffee, we should remember this and be thankful. And second, Coffee is a potent symbol of hospitality. When people call in, we offer them something to drink, usually tea or coffee, and then sit and chat with them. Hospitality is central to our Christian faith, and coffee reminds us of this. 
Jesus understood the importance of hospitality. He often drank and ate with people and engaged with them in this way. And his very last meeting with his friends was a meal with them. And I reckon that if coffee had been around in Jesus' time, he would have definitely been a coffee drinker. And third, there is a social justice dimension to coffee. Westerners love their coffee and like to complain about the cost of a cup. And cups of coffee are getting more expensive because we are at last realising that the people who pick the beans have been paid a pittance and organisations such as Fair Trade are raising our awareness of this and are working to see that the people involved in the coffee trade are getting a decent wage. And again, Jesus would commend this. I conclude with this coffee prayer from Catholic Relief Services. Loving Saviour, I drink this cup in solidarity with the one who planted the seedlings, in solidarity with the one who nurtured the soil, in solidarity with the one who watered the trees, in solidarity of the one who harvested the beans in their cherries, in solidarity with the one who brought the harvest to market. It has been a long time brewing, this cup, and with each sip, I pray for justice for everyone in the production chain, particularly those whose poverty prevents them from tasting the bounty they have provided for me. Solidarity, justice. This is our challenge. But one thing I have learned from you, Lord, is that small cups can contain great miracles and we can all find oneness there. Amen.